Believe it or not, I do spend a lot of time browsing the internet to find you a nice components that you can integrate in your Home Assistant without needing any additional purchase. So once again, today we'll be looking at the Hex components that I found this week. Plus one thing that actually is not Hex component, integration or front-end, that I just needed to include in this video. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Since I know that I can talk too much, let's jump straight into first one. Let's go to Hex, Integrations, Explore and Download, and type Retry. This is one of those integrations that you probably never even thought about, but are actually so awesome and can help you either save the money or some other issues that you potentially could have, without even knowing that you are having issues. What this custom component does, it just retries things. For example, let's imagine that you have a watering automation that waters your lawn or your plants in the pots or something like that. And you run that automation for, let's say, 15 minutes. Then you trigger stop and the stop command actually never passes through because device was at that point unavailable. And we all know that Home Assistant skips devices that are unavailable. So you would have thought that the automation has stopped, but actually the water kept running, running and running. Same can be used for the lights. For example, you want to turn the lights off when you are out of your apartment. Some of the lights are currently unavailable due to ZigBee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi network issues. And the lights stay on for two years because you decided to go on a sabbatical and travel around the world. And this component can help you with that. For example, it can retry and retry and then retry some more the same service call until it succeeds. Well, we'll talk about that until it succeeds in a couple of seconds, but first let's see what you need to install it. Click on download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 2.5.0. Click download. And since this is an integration, you have to restart your home assistant. This service actually wraps around the service. So, for example, retry.actions wraps around the turn lights on or turn lights off service call. That way, it will retry and keep retrying service calls either to the maximum default, which is seven times, or you can even specify it and say, for example, eight, nine, or ten times, or reduce it to two or three times. It depends on your use case. This service call is not suitable for all of the scenarios. For example, one of them is that if you need to take care of the service calls, what is called first, second and third, this is not a good service call for you. Wrapping it around the current services is really easy. For example, here is the case. Instead of using service home assistant turn on and then using target entity ID light kitchen, we use service retry call, add data, then the service name we used previously and the target we used previously that will retry this service call to turn the kitchen lights on and off, depending on how many times did you specify. Default value, as I said, is 7, but you can specify retries, and then it will retry as many times as it is needed. Each delay for the retry is double the amount of the previous one. It retries on 0 seconds, 1 second, 2 second, 4 second, 8 second, etc., depending on how many tries you specify. Or to show you an example, let's create new automation. Trigger can be, for example, sun, sunset, meaning that the sun is below the horizon, action, call service, light turn off, and uh, entity will be, for example, light bedroom. If we look at YAML code, it looks like this. We have service, light turn off, target is this entity ID, and data is actually not needed, we can remove it. To convert it, I've added service retry.call, data is service light turn off, target is entity ID light bedroom. Save it, give it a name, and save. Now, when the sun sets, it will try to turn off the lights in the bedroom. If your ZigBee network is currently unavailable, there is an issue, for example, with the light, it will keep retrying for the seven times. If you want to specify the actual number of retries, add retries, and then specify the number, for example, 10. But that's not all. Actually, you can also specify one additional thing. And this is, let's call it like check, additional check that it succeeded. You can specify the desired or wanted state of the device after it has been turned on or off. 
by adding expected underscore state equals off or on, depending if the service is on off, you can have additional verification where this retry call will check if the new state of the device light bedroom is on as wanted or wished. If you do find this integration useful, thank Amit by going to the GitHub repository and giving your repository a star. Next one is not something that I thought I would be adding to my home assistant, but when I found it or discovered it, I decided that this is something that I need to have in my home, especially since my network, both the Ethernet network and Wi-Fi networks are pretty large. Yes, this is a network scanner. This one is currently not available directly from HACS, so because of that, we need to go to GitHub repository and copy the URL. If I don't forget, the URL to that GitHub repository will be, as always, down in a bit of description. This is network scanner. We need to copy this URL here and paste it inside our custom repositories in hex. Integrations, three dots, custom repositories, and paste the URL. Select integration and add. Let's close it, click explore, and type network, and select network scanner. So what it does, this is the scanner that will actually scan your network, the IP address range, and file all available devices, of course, the ones that respond to the network scanning. Then it will present you with their MAC addresses. And depending on how the responses are gathered from the devices, you may actually get some additional information. If, for example, you know that this MAC address is this type of device from this vendor, you can also customize it and add those devices manually in the list. But let us first download it. The latest version at the time of the recording is version 1.0.5. Download. And once again, we have to restart our Home Assistant. So while Home Assistant is starting, let's look at the documentation. One thing that we will need to add is our IP range. You can add it in two ways, like this or this one here. I will be using this one here because I'm using slash 22. Optionally, as I mentioned, you can specify the MAC address, friendly name and the manufacturer of the device if you already know what MAC addresses matches your specific IT equipment that is on a network and that is maybe not discovered by this integration. Let's proceed with the configuration. Go to settings, integrations, click on add integration, type in network, Select Network Scanner, and here you can specify the IP address range, either by using minus and then the end IP address, or what I'll do is I'll be using this one here. I mentioned that you can customize the MAC addresses, but we will not be doing anything here. We'll just press Submit. But the question is how you can now display the results from this integration. For that, let's go back to the documentation. I will be copying this part here. You can copy everything and insert it in the empty card, but I will be copying it here. In Home Assistant, Add Card, Markdown, and I will replace it with the text I've just copied previously. And click Save. Here we now have a list of all the IP addresses, MAC addresses, and if it has been discovered, custom name, custom description, and host name. For most of the devices, they didn't know what device it was, so yeah, a lot of unknown devices. But as I said, you can customize and map the MAC address with the vendor and the device you have on your network. The scanning process is repeated every 15 minutes. If you have issues with this integration, check out that you have Nmap available or installed on your system. Most of the home assistant installations should already have that one enabled or installed or pre-installed, especially if you are using Home Assistant OS. And if you want to manually map MAC addresses with the devices and the vendors, you can do it in the following format. If you do like and find this integration useful, don't forget to give this repository a star to thank Parvez for creating this awesome custom component. Now let's look at one additional Hex component. This one is a front-end component and it's called Lovelace Expander Card. If you do find this card useful, don't forget to thank Peter for it by clicking the star on the GitHub repository. This one also needs to be added to Home Assistant as a custom component or a custom repository, so we need to scroll down, copy this URL here, and paste it in the Hex custom repositories. The question is what this card does. It does exactly what it says. It creates a collapsible card where you can show or hide some of the entities depending if you want to see them or not. Let's add it to Home Assistant. In Hex, go to Frontend, Three dots, 
Custom Repositories, select Lovelace, paste the repository and click on Add. In New Repository List you should now see Expander card or if not click on Add Explore, Expander and select Expander card. Click on Download and Download. At the time of the recording the latest version is version 0.0.4. Click Reload. Since this is a front-end component, we do not have to restart our Home Assistant. So let's go to Overview. Let's, for example, click here, three dots, Edit Dashboard, and select Expander. And here you can specify cards that you will be using, but also specify the layout. For example, you can add a title, you can remove the background, you can start the card expanded or not, you can use the CSS to define the color or button backgrounds. You can define the gap between the cards to keep them together, padding of all cards, padding of child cards, and the title card. For example, I've added this Mushroom Chips card as a title card, and then under the cards, I will add, as I said, additional cards. Button cards calendar and this entity card. Let's click save. We see the mushroom chip card at the top, collapse it and can see then the other cards that are hidden under the main title card. This is a great and easy way to save space inside your UI in Home Assistant. And now let's look at the last thing that I wanted to show you today. And I cheated. This is not a HEX or HACS component, integration or front-end. This is just a tiny, tiny piece of code that you can insert inside the helper. So let's quickly do that. In the settings page, devices and services, go to helpers, create helper, select template, template a sensor, paste the code and the code will be linked down in a video description and give this a name, start date, submit. If you go to Entities, type Start Date, what you now have is you now have Start Date available in your Home Assistant. Yes, Star Trek Start Date. So if anybody formed the Star Trek, it doesn't matter if it's the next generation, the original series, or wherever, drops down on Earth, asks you, can you tell me what the date, time, or start date is? You can go to your Home Assistant and say, today is 77415.6. Yeah, this is a accurate, as accurate it can be, start date based on the scientific data from the Star Trek universe. And for this nice piece of code, the math and the reasoning behind it, we have to thank Lily Start on the community forum by giving her a star or like or heart for creating this awesome template that we can use in our Home Assistant instance. Especially if you are using Star Trek theme and if you do not know how to use Star Trek theme, Check out this video above. This is a nice addition to that video there. I really do hope that you did find this video useful. And if you do like any of those components or this piece of code, don't forget to thank the original authors by starring them in the GitHub repository or giving it a heart on the community forum. If you yourself find any gem outside or inside the hacks, don't forget to link it either in the video description, tag me on a Twitter or also post it on my Discord server. The link to my Twitter, Instagram and Discord server are as always down in the video description. And before I wrap up this video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented or shared my videos. I really do appreciate everything you did. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the Join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month or going to my merchandise store and buying something there. But also you have option of giving me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, live long and prosper.